Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to have a look at the new upcoming Ubuntu 2004, or the Focal Fassa. I kind of want to say Focal Mufasa. They should have done Focal Mufasa. Come on. Come on, guys. Come on. But anyway, we are going to have a look at this, and uh, let's start out with some um, update notes. Now, this article was originally written back in November, or maybe, uh, but it's just been updated on Saturday, and I just wanted to do just look at a couple brief things. Uh, and in this case, it's this is uh, the next release of the LTS. And uh, with the LTS, they generally don't make a lot of major changes. This one they actually have. Obviously, there's some theming changes. That's kind of minor either way. The largest change and something we'll probably spend a little bit of time talking about here is, oh, look at this. The Ubuntu Software Store is now Snap-based version. Still the same app based on GNOME software, but actually that changed. Um, but package using the Snap format. Almost like I kind of knew what I was talking about when everyone was calling me a fear monger full of uncertainty and doubt. This is never going to happen. Um, yeah, you guys that uh, decided to trash talk and probably got yourself banned from my channel for uh, leaving me negative comments, I will openly await your apology. Maybe I was right about all this kind of stuff. It's kind of neat when these predictions from a year ago are coming through, true. Um, even though they said, well, it's not this way. And, and yeah, apt is still available. If you go into the terminal, you can still install things via apt. But there's been some interesting erosions and developments around that. Um, there is uh, this one here, uh, discourse.ubuntu.com. And so basically what they looked at here is that, yeah, actually, I don't even think they're using the GNOME Software Center anymore. Although you can remove the current Snap Store, you can reinstall the GNOME Software Center. Uh, you can actually uh, get that functionality back. You can still run flat packs, but by default, this is a Snap-centric system. All of the software in the easy-to-use GUI installer is Snap. Now, there might be some exceptions to that, but the things that I looked at uh, were indeed some snaps. So we have GNOME 3.36, we have Linux kernel 5.4, uh, ZFS install. I can say that the installer was the installer has definitely been changed. And I thought it was a very nice, very easy to use installer. Uh, overall, I, though, I think that the the build itself of the system is a little on the goofy side. It's like huge and blocky, and I'm not a huge fan of it. Although I don't want to get uh, too hung up over the the style, the aesthetics of it, um, because that's very subjective, and I completely understand that. So let's go ahead and uh, have a look at the system, and the first thing I'm going to show you is, uh, unless it's going to work for me here, but it consistently failed, I could not log into the system under X. I can't under Wayland, so we're going to go ahead and try logging in under uh, X first. So we land on our screen here. You can see it's very similar to the old, but again, it's huge and bulky. I don't think it's necessarily a, um, a good improvement. Over here, we can see, um, so we have a GNOME Remga kiosk. We have our basic Ubuntu, which should be X. This is the one that for me kept crashing when I first set up the system. Maybe it was just something that would crash on the first setup when it's trying to, uh, trying to go, but it just kept on crashing and sending me right back to here. So no change there. So I can't log in under X. Let's go ahead and log in under Wayland instead. So get into Wayland, and when I first booted this guy up, it just gave me a ton of crash reports. Um, tracker miners is what kept on crashing. Let's give it a second here, see if it goes. Maybe it won't. Maybe it was just something on first boot. I did change the wallpaper to this one. Very nice wallpaper. Um, there are a variety of different uh, wallpapers. Now, I would have kept the default if the new default one was in there, but you can see we're all still having the old wallpapers. Wallpapers are something they usually don't push in until the release, so no big deal there. Um, we do have, um, inside of our appearances, we can go with a pure dark theme, a pure light theme, or the standard light with some dark, which I always think is a very nice look. So the theming overall looks pretty good. Um, uh, I do like the icons. I like the theming of the setup overall. It, uh, it is pretty good. Uh, we do have 
fine-tuning notifications so we can uh, do do not disturb you won't get any notifications at all uh, we can disable lock screen notifications or you can fine-tune you can get notifications for some things and not for others hey look at this we are getting our first Ubuntu errors let's go ahead and show the details looks like this one there's something wrong with Xorg apparently um, so all right let's go ahead and not send for now uh, application passwords and keys has closed unexpectedly. Um, been Seahorse. You know, I should have sent the last one. We're going to go ahead and send it. Um, I'm just going to... Your display manager log files can help developers. Sure, why not? Why not, you know? Oh, my lands. I don't know. Just leave me alone. Stop. My God. Stop. Leave me alone. I'd like to finish my review. All right. Um, here we have, there's some applications. Die. All right. Um, <clears throat> die? <laughs> um, here's privacy, location services. It did give us the option to turn on or turn off location services. It was uh, toggled off by default, so that's all good. Um, I like to see a system doing that kind of stuff. So our displays, colors, default applications. Of course, here's what we have. All right, now, the biggest concern, of course, is the store, I think. Most of the other things are pretty much the same. Um, here is the all applications. We get some games. I installed Evolution. This was a test. Um, let's see. <clears throat> here's the Snap Store. Let's see, what do we got here? Because this is, this is just software, so this looks like the GNOME Software Center. Um, there is that Snap Store there. I clicked on that. Is that going to open for me or not? Let's close this. Let's go ahead and open this guy back up. Let's see what this guy's going to do here. Well, this guy's working on its thing. I do want a terminal open up. So we're going to go open up a terminal, and we're going to do a snap list. Let me just show you what is here by default. So it looks like that, um, it looks like that snap store is not loading up. So this is what is by default what is involved installed as a snap. So let's go ahead and open this guy up. Now, one of the challenges here that Linux Mint has actually figured out how to resolve because they have the ability to do your snaps or your, uh, excuse me, your flat packs, but it has them all integrated in the same software center. So you'll see here that we have Thunderbird installed. Thunderbird is actually installed as an apt package. So if I do a sudo apt install Thunderbird, then it's going to tell me that it is already installed. Whoop, except, oh, yeah, I gotta type install right, don't I? Really? Okay, so it's telling me here that it's already the newest version. You can see it's definitely from the repositories. All right, we're gonna minimize our terminal for a second. Um, let's go ahead and cancel Thunderbird. You can see everything there is working. Now, if I come up here and I type in to look for Thunderbird, it gives me the option for Thunderbird, and it will basically tell us that, hey, you can install Thunderbird. You can see here that there's only one in here. It's this guy here, and we have the ability to install it. So where's this installing from? Well, this is installing from the Snap Store, so snapcraft.io. So now we will actually have two Thunderbirds installed on our system, and I may or may not know this. Let me go ahead and type in Thunderbird. Oh, look at that. I got two Thunderbirds installed. Uh, which one is which? There's a fun question for us. <clears throat> okay. Now let's boot up our terminal, rerun our snap list. You can see that now we have Thunderbird installed as a snap. So that's kind of what's going on here is this default store here will install your snaps. And I looked at a variety of applications here. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and have a look at... Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if there's a snap for filezilla or not we have an unofficial and we have a filezilla why do we have and what uh, that's baffling to me all right so this guy here this guy is from the repositories you can see that that's from the repositories what is this unofficial 
uh, oh, look, the snap is in here from this developer that I thoroughly, fully trust. So <laughs> let's go ahead and install this guy, see what it does. Hopefully this installs from uh, the repositories and not from the dubious snap. Uh, because that is a dubious snap. FileZilla, unofficial, from a author. Let's go ahead and refresh this. Hopefully, we will not see FileZilla in there, which we will not. But FileZilla is now installed on the system. So that is good. All right. So overall, I kind of want to make the point with this that they're trying to prioritize installing your snap packages first and of course they did do fun things like if we do sudo apt install and chromium and i don't remember if it's chromium or chromium browser on ubuntu so let me go ahead and do browser so you can see here it uh what it's doing here is it go went in it went to the repository but all the repository does is load the install snap script. So it's installing Chromium on a snap despite me installing apt uh, with uh, it, the Chromium browser with apt. So again, look at our snap list. And now we have Chromium installed here as a snap despite I installed it via apt. So let's go ahead and do a search for Chromium. Let's see what this guy's telling me. Here's Chromium, it's already installed. If I look at the Chromium, this guy's coming from Snapcraft, uh, but it's the same Snap as we had over here. And this is what my concern is. Now, why am I concerned about Snap? Well, because there's really only one source to get them. This is why Linux Mint is concerned about the Snaps. There's really only one source, and malware has crept in there, and according to their website, when they did that, they said, hey, we are shifting from trusting the software to trusting the developer of the software. And then who are the developers? A lot of the big companies that those of us switching to Linux are switching to Linux to avoid. You know, your Microsofts and your Facebooks and your Spotify's, your big tech companies. So that's a concern that I have. Now, all that being said, is this going to be a good system for somebody? Well, I don't know. The default login kept crashing for me. How many new people would know that they would have to go down to the gear at the bottom corner on the login screen and change that to Wayland? Which I will note, Wayland still does not work with a lot of things. Like on my current setup here, I cannot record video on Wayland with this system because it won't capture the overlays. It's one of the limitations of Wayland, unless they fix that since I've used it last. But last time I did, which was not super long ago, we still have those issues. So I can use the system, but I couldn't do things like a lot of the video production stuff that I'm doing because it does not allow it to work. Uh, there's still not a whole ton of systems that are on Snap, so that is very true. Um, for the most part, eh, I don't know, guys. I don't know. Um, I'm still leery about Ubuntu. I, I'm not a fan of where they're going. Now, the developers have done a great, great job, I think. They, they know where they're going. They are happy with the direction, and I'm okay with that. And if you want to use the Ubuntu system, I'm okay with that, too. Hey, I'd rather you on Ubuntu than on Windows. But where my concern starts to become is when everything in the system starts moving towards the snap system, is that going to work? Okay, there it goes. Um, then we're starting to introduce some issues. One of the issues and the things I talk about a lot is with software, sometimes you don't absolutely want the latest feature version releases. That's why I like Debian. That's why I like the older way of doing Ubuntu. That's why I like the older systems because my features aren't constantly changing. When you are running with a snap system, your features may constantly be changing. Debian, by the way, gets the security updates. It's not an insecure system. It just doesn't roll the versions. And sometimes that's better for stability and for your workflow. So overall, um, I encourage everyone to, to grab a copy of this. 
install it on your system, have a look at it. This is the start of Ubuntu's testing week. Test it around, see if you're getting the same bugs that I'm getting here. Uh, report those if you can, do any bug reports, help get the system out, um, out there to the developers. But at the same time, I have personal uh, leeriness of running and using Ubuntu on a regular basis. Just because I don't like the philosophy they're doing, and something else I didn't mention, by the way, I saw it in here when I did this. They they do have live patch set up, which you can do on the installer. So live patch is a way to install. Ba it's basically like, hey, convert your Ubuntu to Windows 10. It will just automatically apply updates without your intervention. Now, you do have to sign into an Ubuntu account to use it. And it's unclear to me. I think uh, if I remember correctly, when I went over to uh, the website, I think they actually said that does require a subscription service that may or may not be true. Um, if you are uh, more familiar with it, then uh, please definitely correct me there in the comments. It's not something that I have dug into a whole ton. Let's go ahead and just do a quick search for it. Canonical live patch service from Ubuntu. So here's the live patch service, applies critical kernel patches without rebooting. It basically does the updates automatically without uh, restarting, reduces downtime, uh, included as part of Ubuntu Advantage for infrastructure support. Okay, so you do have free for personal use. All you need is a Ubuntu One account, and it is free for three machines. So up to three machines on a single Ubuntu One account, you can go ahead and run your live patch. Um, you can buy it as part of Ubuntu Advantage. This is a very reasonable thing that they're doing here, kind of like a Red Hat type model. Hey, if you do need this type of thing, and if frankly, if you're running a server, this is a good thing. Desktop environment? Eh, I'm not quite as quite as interested. Um, it does have the option, of course, you can turn it off, so it's nothing you have to use, so I'm not going to criticize anything there. But overall, yeah, I've had some issues. I can't log in on X, at least on this virtual machine, which I'm using a, uh, I'm still using VirtualBox 5 something uh, or another. And uh, I'm happy with that. Every, you know, most distros that I'm working with work just fine. I don't like the fact that their store is now snap first. Everything is going snap first and then only with your, uh, only with your repositories as a backup. Of course, if you do go into the terminal for now, most of the things that you install are going to install with the re repos. Um, I have not heard of other applications like Chromium, although I'm sure that there's some other ones that are out there. So there's my original take on Ubuntu. Um, is it good? Is it bad? I, that's kind of a subjective opinion. Um, I'm going to let you uh, have an idea for that. But for you, all you guys that are telling me, oh, this is just fear, uncertainty, and doubt, they're not going to replace this. Well, they just kind of did. So I'll be humbly waiting for your apology. No, no, cross scratch that. I won't be humbly waiting for it. I'll just be waiting. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Ubuntu. If you like this video, definitely subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit the like button there or, or hit the dislike. If you're just, ah, he's just horrible. I hate his ugly face. Go ahead. No, no, that's fine. Uh, leave me some comments if you want. Of course, if they are inappropriate comments, if they are rude comments, you will probably get deleted and or reported and or blocked one of them. <laughs> so anyway, uh, with that, though, uh, definitely let us know what you think in the comments down below respectfully, and we will see you next time.